Hello guys, I am Paneenta and welcome back to my channel to polish your CAC concepts with me. So let's get started. In today's video, we are going to see one of the major topics or very important topics of algorithms that is asymptotic notations. Now basically what is asymptotic notations? These are the notations, uh, you can say that these are the mathematical notations that are used to calculate the time complexity in a meaningful way. Uh, whenever any algorithm is given, um, you can say any algorithm or any step of any program is given, we are finding the time complexity in a standard way or a meaningful way with the help of this asymptotic notations, right? Uh, in this asymptotic notations, basically we are taking the decisions based on the order of growth. Now, what do you mean by order of growth? Uh, whenever any code is given, we can say that how that code is growing, how the time complexity of that code is growing in terms of order of growth like like order of n, it is growing in the uh, growth of n or growing in the growth of uh, log n, n square, n cube like that we are determining this with the help of asymptotic notations. Now as we will proceed with the examples, you will get a better idea. Uh, if I talk about the main three notations, they are, see these three. This first one is known as big O, this is big theta and this is big omega. These are the three main notations of asymptotic uh, mathematical representation. Now what is the main difference of these three notations? Many people are actually finding this topic very confusing or people are doing many mistakes in this. But this is actually very easy if you understand the concept once. So if I tell the basic difference between these three, big O. This big O is used generally to represent the upper bound. This omega is used to represent the lower bound and this theta is used to represent the medium bound or middle bound. So this is the main thing that you have to keep in mind. Otherwise, this is a simple topic. See, if I show you the graph, here I have drawn for you how the graph is. For example, this is my x and y axis. So the middle line or the main line that will be my fx, it will be equal to theta of n. Because what I have told what is theta, it is the medium bound. Medium bound means what? It is neither the upper bound nor the lower bound. It is the same bound as of fx. So this middle line or the same line of fx, it is theta of n. If we are having lower bound, if we are drawing here lower bound, it will give me omega. And if I am drawing upper bound, then it will give me big O. Because as I told, big O is the upper bound. What do we mean by upper bound? That means my fx cannot grow more than omega. And my fx cannot be less than uh, sorry, this is my fx that is equal to theta. Now, I am telling that big O is the upper bound. That means what? My fx cannot grow above big O and it cannot uh, fall below omega. I hope you are getting somewhat idea. Now, as I told you, you will get a better idea along with the example, but I am just trying to give you an overall idea. You just have to remember that big O will always be greater than theta and omega will always be less than theta. This is how the relation between these three are. Fine, now let's see with the help of example. Um, in academics also or in various competitive exams also, which type of questions are coming? They are giving one relation and they are uh, asking you that whether that given relation is true or false or they are giving you one equal to or not equal to equation and they are uh, telling you to prove that like that various types of question are there so let's solve couple of such examples so that any such examples pops up anywhere you will be able to solve them out the our basic uh, aim is not to give you the type of questions but your concept should be clear once your concepts are clear you can solve out any questions right okay so let's start with example for example i am given 3n plus 5 is not equal to order of 1. I have to prove it. This is my question that I have to prove this thing. Now the very first thing in such examples are whenever any such example is given, the first thing you have to see is this notation. Which notation is given here? Order of 1. Now okay, let me quickly um, tell you the formulas. In case of big O, 
right if i am having big o what it says that fn should always be less than or equal to in case of fn right fn should always be less than or equal to c into g of n what is c what is fn what is g n we will be discussing all those things in case of big omega fn will always be greater than or equal to c of c into g of n and in case of big theta fn will always lie in between because as i told it is the medium bound that means c1 into g of n is less than or equal to f of n and it is less than or equal to c2 into g of n so these are the basic relations that you have to remember now keeping these things in mind we will solve out the examples now the first example is 3n plus 5 is not equal to order of 1 we have to prove it now uh, keep in mind what is given here big o now i know that in big o i am having basically for big o the condition is fn should be less than or equal to c into g of n right now any example that is given just keep in mind that whatever is given here the whole equation that will be my f of n and whatever is there between this order omega or theta whatever is there in between the parenthesis whatever is there that will be my g of n means if i tell you here here my fn is 3n plus 5 and my gn is 1 fine so this is these are the basic things whatever i have told you up to now if you got these things clearly then we can solve out the examples correctly and very quickly fine see fn is given G, uh, we have already determined what will be my fn and what will be my gn fine now we will start solving here fn is given this much now for n is greater than or equal to 1 i am just assuming the basic this is the basic value that for if my n is greater than or equal to 1 what i will get 3n plus 5 this is fn that is given 3n plus 5 now generally this will be greater than or equal to 3n understand actually this is prove it now so we are having various ways to prove it just i am showing you that which is which is the clear way or easier way you can simply state by the help of these proofs that the given statement is correct or incorrect now first of all we are taking fn 3n plus 5 it is greater than or equal to 3n obviously because this side plus 5 is there and this side nothing is there in addition so generally 3n plus 5 is greater than or equal to 3n fine similarly 3n plus 5 will be greater than or equal to alone 5 also right because here 3n is added here nothing is added now generally if anything is greater than 5 it will obviously be greater than 1 see this is whole logical this is basic maths nothing much if anything will be greater than or equal to 5 then obviously it will be greater than or equal to 1 because 1 is less than even 5 so if 5 is less than or equal to this then obviously 1 will also be less than or equal to this fine why i have uh, uh, written here 1 because see the, my main aim is whatever is given first of all i will determine what is my fn and what is my gn now basically what i want to do is i will establish i will try to establish a relation between my fn and gn and then i will come to the conclusion so here i have done the same 3n plus 5 must be greater than or equal to al uh, alone 3n similarly 3n plus 5 must be greater than or equal to alone 5 and if it is greater than or equal to 5 then obviously it will be greater than or equal to 1 also so what i did by here i have established the relation between fn and gn now what i got that this is what my fn so i got that my fn is greater than or equal to my gn is greater than or equal to my gn right that means uh, gn alone i can write it as c into gn when i don't have c i can uh, consider my c or constant will be one so i can write gn as c into gn by considering constant equal to 1 so in short what i got fn is greater than or equal to c into gn but for 
बिग ओ माई कंडीशन शुड बी एफ एन शुड बी लेस देन और इक्वल टू सी इन टू जी एन राइट बट वॉट आई एम गेटिंग एफ एन इज ग्रेटर देन और इक्वल टू सी इन टू जी एन दैट मीन्स ऑब्वियसली दिस इज कॉन्ट्राडिक्टिंग माई बिग ओ इक्वेशन दैट मीन्स आई कैन से दैट थ्री एन प्लस फाइव इज नॉट इक्वल टू ऑर्डर ऑफ वन यू आर गेटिंग इफ इट हैज टू बी इक्वल टू ऑर्डर ऑफ वन देन आई शुड हैव गॉट दिस इक्वेशन दैट एफ एन शुड बी लेस देन और इक्वल टू सी इन टू जी एन बट आई एम नॉट गेटिंग दैट राइट सो आई कैन से दैट थ्री एन प्लस फाइव इज नॉट इक्वल टू ऑर्डर ऑफ वन सो इट इज दैट इज ही इट इज जस्ट यू यू मस्ट बी नोइंग दिज फॉर्मुलाज एंड योर लॉजिक मस्ट बी क्लियर दैट्स इट एज आई टोल्ड यू स्टेप बाई स्टेप वी जस्ट हैव टू गो स्टेप बाई स्टेप एंड यू विल इजिली गेट द आंसर Fine. So this is the first question. Let's solve couple of examples more. Okay. Mm. Let me take ten n square plus five n is not equal to omega of n cube. Again, I have to prove it. So how to prove it? Again, we have to establish a relation. Okay, first of all, let me write it here. What will be my f n and g n? My f n will be this, and my g n will be n cube, right? Okay. Now again, we will try to establish a relation between these three. Generally, we know that n cube will always be greater than or equal to n square, right? Logical enough. N cube here. Three n's are there, and here two n's are there. So generally, n cube will be greater than or equal to n square. And if it is greater than or equal to n square, then obviously it will be greater than or equal to ten n square. And then obviously it will be greater than or equal to ten n square plus five n. Fine, logical enough. So uh, what I can say that this n cube is what my g of n. So I can say that g of n. Or as I told, I can multiply c. So c into g of n, I got it is equal greater than or equal to this is my f of n. I got this relation. But here, what is given? Omega. What my omega says that f n must be greater than or equal to c into g of n. But I am getting opposite. I am getting c into g of n is greater than or equal to f of n. That means this equation is contradicting with this equation. That means I can say that my f of n. is not equal to omega of n cube because if it is if i want it to be equal to this equation should match with this but i am getting the opposite equation that means my fn must not be equal to omega of n cube so it is proved simple as that fine okay let me take another example because the more examples we take the clearer idea you will get well the next example let's take it as <coughs> Ten n square plus five n plus twenty is not equal to order of n. Fine. How to solve it again? Here, if we take f n equal to what? Ten n square plus five n plus twenty, and g of n will be n. Fine. Okay. How to solve it? The first step that we are doing is establish a relation between these two. Now, ten n square plus five n plus twenty will obviously be greater than only five n because this side other two terms are added here. Nothing is added, so this must be greater than or equal to five n. Now, if it is greater than or equal to even five n, then obviously it will be greater than or equal to only n, right? So here, see again, I have established the relation. So I can say that this is my f of n f of n is greater than or equal to only n here what i have given big o what my big o says that f n must be less than or equal to c into g of n but here i got that f n is greater than or equal to c into this n is what my g of n so again i got the opposite equation that i then i should be getting so i can say that if i am getting the equal if i am getting the same equation i could have said that it is equal to order of n but here i am getting opposite equation so i can say that this is not equal to order of n and it is proved fine okay the next example is mm, log c yes let's take one example of log log of root n is equal to order of log n we have to prove it how to prove it 
again first of all determine fn and gn in this case my fn will be equal to log of root n and my gn will be equal to log n now trying to establish the relation we know that n will always be greater than or equal to root n right this is obvious because here 2 will be there and here root 2 will be there you can put the values and check in the calc also if you are unclear about it obviously 2 will always be greater than or equal to the value of root 2 so always n is greater than or equal to root n now if i apply log on both the sides then we will get that log n will be greater than or equal to log of root n fine <clears throat> what is my log n g of n so i can say that g of what i what the relation i got is c into g of n is greater than or equal to f of n now what is here here big o is given what my big o says that f n must always be less than or equal to c into g of n f n must always be less than or equal to c into g of n yes in this case i am getting the correct equation so i can say that yes whatever is given me uh, log of root n is equal to order of log n getting because we got the exact equations in the previous examples we were getting the contradicting equations and so we were putting not equal to here but here we are getting the correct equation so i can say that yes log of root n is equal to order of log n fine so yes this is also proved now let's take one last example <clears throat> 10n square plus 5n is not equal to theta of n cube now what is theta as i told you it is the medium bound we have not taken any example of theta na so in at the end let's take the example of theta now by definition here by this definition what we can say we know that okay first of all let me determine fn and gn fn will be equal to 10n square plus 5n and g of n is equal to n cube by the definition we know that c1 into g of n is less than or equal to f of n and it is less than or equal to c2 into g of n now c1 into if i put up this gn value here n cube is less than or equal to let's put up fn value here n square plus 5n is less than or equal to c2 into n cube now if i take only this much part what i will get if i am taking only this much part lhs right so what i am getting here not equal to is there so i just have to prove up to the point when i am getting that okay this is not equal to fine so i will go up only up to there now if i take only this much part i am getting that c1 into n cube is less than or equal to 10n square plus 5n now um see this is c constant so i can take any constant c and if for any constant c this this equation is contradicting then i can say that uh, this this is not equal to right so uh, let me take the value of let uh, let's assume the value of n is greater than or equal to 1 and the value of this constant c1 equal to 10 as i told we can assume any constant value here for any constant for all the constant values this equation should hold true so i am uh, i am checking by taking c1 equal to 10 so what i will get i will get it as 10 n cube is less than or equal to 10 n square plus 5 n so if you see this equation this 10 n cube is less than or equal to 10 n square plus 5 n this is itself incorrect why because you can put up any value here if i am taking n equal to 1 right if i am taking n equal to 1 here putting n equal to 1 what will i get if i put n equal to 1 i am getting 10 is less than or equal to 10 i am putting n equal to 1 plus 5 that means 10 is less than or equal to 15 is it correct 10 is less than or equal to 15 no it is not correct so it is not correct and here also not equal to so it is also proved so in this way you have to prove these examples it is very easy you just need to know these um <clears throat> equations and you just need to know you just need to practice such examples so that you know how to establish the relation between two i have given you here five or six examples i hope you have understood it your concept is clear and it will be helpful for solving any such type of question okay so if you this is all about this topic if you like the uh, video please like and comment here and subscribe to the channel for such technical concepts thank you so much